Hey everyone, welcome back to the Waterstones vlog. It is Will here. Um, you may have seen this week that the Costa Book Awards have announced their shortlists. Uh, if you don't know the Costa Book Awards, they have different categories. So there's uh, novel, first novel, biography, poetry, and children's books, uh, and they have shortlists for each of those. Then there'll be category winners announced at the beginning of next year, and then an overall book of the year announced a couple of weeks after that. Um, I ha it was very interesting to see some of the books on the shortlist. Great to see another nod for Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. Um, also great to see Surge by Jay Bernard in the poetry list. But I had a particular interest in the biography section this year because this year I was on the judging panel for biography. So I've spent the last few months reading a lot of biographies, and I mean a lot. Uh, and then had a meeting with my fellow judges, Professor Susanna Lipscomb and James Marriott, and we then had to whittle those down to a short list, which was really, really hard. I have a lot of respect for judges now having done this. It's just really tricky to sort of lose some books that you absolutely love in order to come up with a shortlist of four books. However, we did it, and I'm very, very proud of this shortlist. I think there is something for almost any type of non-fiction reader here. Um, here they are, and I'm just going to have a little quick word about each of them in no particular order. Um, I'm going to pick up, first of all, On Chapel Sands by Laura Cumming, which uh, I have actually mentioned myself here once before, and indeed it's been covered by Naomi on the vlog. Um, not too much more to say here, obviously, but uh, what begins with a fascinating premise, the idea of a young girl basically being kidnapped on a beach disappearing for a few days and then coming back to the family home, n not talking about what had happened, not able to really remember what had happened in those few days, and Laura coming, uh, sort of digging into her family's past to find out more about what had happened and why it had happened. Completely fascinating book. Um, and it manages to combine, I think, some of those things that are interesting about biography, which is that kind of narrative page-turning quality with sort of some meticulous research, a real sense of time and period and place, um, and some also some interesting stuff in there about art, which of course is Laura's um, uh, day job, if you like. That's what's her sort of uh, area of expertise. So absolutely fantastic book. Very, very, very much recommended. Uh, moving on now to The Making of Poetry by Adam Nicholson. Um, this looks at Coleridge and the Wordsworths and the year that they spent together. And it takes an almost sort of day by day approach to telling the story of what happened in this year that they spent together. Um, you can see it's got this really striking cover, and this is um, some artwork that runs throughout the book. Um, see if I can see there's some nice end papers here. Uh, there's other images throughout the book um, to sort of uh, not, not so much illustrate the text because they're not always directly related to what's happening in the book, but I guess to sort of help add to the feeling of the book. Now, I don't know about you, but I was taught poetry really appallingly at school, and so I don't have a great awareness of the work of Coleridge or Wordsworth. Um, and so it was quite interesting to read this book because it, it really looks at how some of these really famous poems were created, what might have fed into them, and, particular, and in particular looking at the landscape that they were in in this year together and how that may have influenced how they were writing and why they were writing. Uh, so lots of, I think, you know, obviously particularly of great interest to those who are into their poetry and, and even especially if they're into Coleridge or Wordsworth, a perfect Christmas gift, that one. Uh, moving on now to The Volunteer by Jack Fairweather, which is a completely fascinating story about um, a Polish soldier, a, a sort of part of the Polish resistance and underground, who volunteered to go into Auschwitz in order to sort of expose what was happening there. And it sort of seems extraordinary to think that anybody would volunteer to go into somewhere like Auschwitz. Um, but this is exactly what he did. And he was there, to, as I say, to sort of expose what was happening there. But of course, you've got the problem about how you get that information out. It's a completely meticulously researched book. And so historically, it feels like a very, very important document. Narratively, it is page turning and fascinating and sort of awful. Um, I've read quite a few books now, I think, about the uh, concentration camps in Nazi Germany. and there is um, a really fine line to tread between sort of uh, sensationalism in a way, like telling that story, but sort of focusing on the, on the gory details, if you like, for no reason other than that they are a bit gross and, and, and sort of horrifying. And here there's sort of a, a real um, discipline in sharing that information, but without sensationalizing it. And in fact, allowing the stories of the people who are there to, to, you know, to sort of tell their own story, if you like. Um, 
fascinating photographs throughout the book showing all of the people there and just uh, brilliant. I mean, absolutely loved it. Couldn't stop reading it. One of those sort of compelling books um, that I couldn't put down. So very, very highly recommended. That's The Volunteer by Jack Fairweather. And then to finish off, we have In Extremis, which is Lindsay Hilson's biography of the um, journalist Mary Colvin. Um, again, so Lindsay Hilson was a friend and colleague of Mary Colvin's, and so she has access to so much of her life uh, as a close friend of yours would. And so therefore there's lots of personal detail in here, and you get a real insight right from her childhood, growing up in America, to throughout her journalistic career, right up until her sort of untimely death. And it is a brilliant insight into journalism, and I think incredibly important in this day and age where uh, journalism in the media is under attack from people saying things like fake news or mainstream media being used as sort of pejorative terms. It's a real insight into the bravery uh, that it takes sometimes to go into certain parts of the world to report what is happening there. And also at the same time you get this insight into how bravery and recklessness sometimes go hand in hand. And there's a real question with Mary Colvin about how far she pushed things and whether that was safe uh, and whether she should have done that or not. Um, her boundaries were always quite fluid and uh, also with that I suppose how that kind of spirit can influence your personal life as well in terms of her close relationships and her family relationships and things like that. So again really really gripping, very very interesting book and, and, and another one that I found myself just turning the pages completely gripped and wanting to sort of take time away from everything else in order to read it. So again, very, very highly recommended. That's In Extremis by Lindsay Hilson. Um, so there we go. Four books on that short list. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I am now going to take a well-earned rest from reading biographies and maybe go and read some fiction. Um, but it was a real privilege to be one of the judges uh, for this year's Costa Prize. Um, I, you know, it's great to read such a breadth of work um, and also to sit down and talk with my fellow judges to work out, uh, you know, the best books to put on that short list um, was, was intellectually challenging and, and really good to, to speak with fellow book lovers, you know, and to find the best book. So if you do read any of them, I obviously hope that you enjoy them. Um, and we will be finding out uh, which book has won not only the biography uh, of the year, but the other categories uh, at the very beginning of January 2020. So watch this space. Take care. Bye.